I'm Jason, out on a cycle down in Witchford. Just recently got back from a cycle across the US and while I was out there, uh, people were kind of intrigued by my bike. A lot of people that do that trip do the classic four pannier setup, but I'd already decided I want to go uh, a little bit faster, shorter days in the saddle, which meant I had to be lightweight and reasonably aerodynamic. So I spent a little bit of time um, perfecting sort of bike setup to do that. And for those that are interested in such things, I thought I'd go into details of what's, what's on the bike and also what I brought with me. So this is the bike. It's a Planet X Tempest, which is a sort of mid-range gravel bike. It weighs about something like uh, 10 kilos as a bare bike. One by drivetrain, um, a SRAM drivetrain. I changed the front ring to, to a 40 from a 42, just to give me slightly lower gearing. And really in the States it was fine. Um, most of the grades were sort of less than 10, 12%, and really um, that sort of gearing, it's a, it's a 11.42 at the back uh, with a 40 at the front, so that was good enough for a fairly light bike on those sort of grades. You can see the, the bag setup is slightly different to normal. I kept the rack on it because the rack was only about 400 grams, and I used the Apigura seat pack that I used for my French trip now one of the problems with that was that although the capacity was pretty good it would tend to wag about and that would make a lot of noise as the as it rubbed on the seat post so uh, for this trip I needed a bit more space because I was away for longer um, and I was carrying some camping gear so I needed to add to the seat pack and what I did was uh, use this dry bag this is a sea to summit big river 20 litre dry bag and you can see it uh, just fastens loosely around the seat post at the front and um, it also straps down to my rack uh, and is held in place by these these sort of uh, pickup points on the dry bag these are really useful because it means if you've got an attachment here and you're attached at the top really this bag can't go anywhere so you're never worried about the thing slipping falling off or whatever and i had absolutely zero problems with that during the, the whole trip so that, that worked out well uh, other little bits you can see my rain jacket sort of uh, quick accessible quickly accessible at the back uh, the light i would tend to use this is a little 3d printed piece that i um, made to just point the light in the right direction now while we're here I just wanted to mention the saddle obviously uh, the right saddle is really important if you're planning a succession of 70 80 mile days saddle fit is obviously an individual type thing but for me I've tried many saddles and I settled on this one it's a Sella Italia Sport it's not light but then it's also not expensive but it is extremely comfortable and I would definitely recommend it. Other bits and pieces on the bike, got a big frame bag, so that was useful. Um, that uh, held a lot of stuff. In the end, I didn't take, camp uh, didn't take cooking gear with me, but it, I got it really so I could put cooking gear in the bottom here, but that, <laughs> that ended up um, full of bananas most of the time or other food, which was really, really helpful. Snacks and things keep in this bag at the top, nicely accessible, as is water. Uh, these two here, so one usually water, one with um, sort of electrolyte in it. A little hack here. Uh, well, I started finding it difficult to pull these out. These, these it would slip on these bottles, so I use some of this sort of tape on here, which is actually, you'd use it on a shower. Um, tray to as a non-slip stick and that really helped sort of just be able to quickly get the get the uh, bottles in and out so pretty obvious thing at the front end here these aero bars these prove to be really useful now you can see there's quite a big riser here I think it's 60 mil something like that 
Um, so it's not a sort of an aggressive uh, time trial type aero bar, but it just gave you another position that you could put your your arms in. So you just sort of sat in the in the arms like this, and that, that was really good in a, on a long ride where normally you might get some problems with your wrists or fatigue or a strain in your wrist then it's um, it just gave another position to go into and that worked really really well on um, into into the wind where it uh, made you much more aero in that position than you would be otherwise um, you can see from the front of the bike it doesn't have a lot of width to it so it's not like sort of four big panniers on it other things to mention here so this is the sort of cockpit area. It's got a quad lock mount um, for my phone. Um, I ended up 3D printing that and just bought in a, a sort of quad lock attachment just to make that work. That's, that worked quite well. Um, and then I had a bit of a problem here. So this is normally where I'd put my GoPro uh, while I was cycling. But I think at some point somebody tried to, <laughs> tried to whip it off. So for the first 2000 miles, it was fine. Uh, and you can see I've had to do a kind of had to do a sort of field repair on this uh, to make it fit. But that that's uh, unfortunately that's affected this sort of orientation of it. But anyway, I need to print up another one probably to to sort that out. And that also held my Garmin. But between these two, between the phone and the Garmin, it always meant I had good sort of speed information route information uh, i could play some music on the phone and because it's sort of quite close to me there then uh you know it's loud enough to hear while i was cycling around that that proved to be really good and then at the front of the bike uh i've got this really big bar bag and i think i've mentioned this before but i've, I've probably had this for 30 years i should think an old carry more bar bag it's really light so it's about um 300 and something grams um, it's quick release, so you can just press this button here um, and pull the thing off straight away. That meant when you stop at a shop, you could just literally take this one bag off and that was it. You, you didn't have to worry about everything else. So I really love that bag, but I was going to do when it finally wears out. I can't find a bag that's that big and that light anywhere, which is uh, a shame. If you know of any, then put something in the comments. That would be great other things on here so I am actually carrying a tent so this is a little one man sort of tent under here in fact I never actually used that so it was there just as a sort of contingency but uh, I just need a good night's sleep these days and I don't tend to get such a good night's sleep in a tent so didn't really end up using that and other things we've got on here there's a bell under there if you can see that is my bear bell so um, if you're off in the trails, up in the wilds, and uh, don't want too much in the way of wildlife um, being surprised by you, then you just uh, release that, and it sort of makes this um, tinkly noise as you're cycling along. And the idea is all the, all the bears run for the hills. Well, like, yeah, as I'm still here, I guess it must have sort of worked. Now, while I'm at the front of the bike, I just wanted to give a shout out to these Schwalbe Marathon All Motion tyres. I knew tyres would be important, wanted something that was going to be uh, good puncture resistance, tends to spoil your day if you get a puncture, but also uh, in keeping with wanting to, to be fast, they needed to be quite light, quite low rolling resistance. So these turned out to be really, really good. Um, so 2,700 miles and the tread is still looking pretty good and also uh, zero punctures. So definitely recommend these. I put an alarm on this. So this little piece here is actually, that's an alarm um, from Knog, Nog, whatever you say it. That was quite useful, which meant I could just zip into a supermarket or something. I'd activate it from my phone. And if anybody messed with it, then it would set an alarm off on the, on the bike and on the phone. So I'd know what's going on. Um, more often than not, I forgot to reset it, so uh, <laughs> it did actually go off. That's most of it. I think one other thing to mention is just this mirror proved really good. This is a Z4 mirror. Um, it can fold away uh, or come out. 
um, probably needs to be the tension is not quite enough so it will tend to sort of move a little bit but you definitely need some rear visibility on these trips just to sort of see what's going on with cars and I like the idea of a mirror much more than these sort of Garmin radar things which I don't think tell you enough about what's going on yeah so that I think uh, that was it it's about 22 kilos all in so the bike with all the bits ended up at about 12 kilos rather than 10 and then another um, another 10 or 11 of packing on top of that so that's still quite a lot less than you see a lot of people struggling across the states with and um, you know if I could give a bit of <laughs> an advice on this it's it's better to go lighter just don't pack more than you need because it's it's a misery cycling a heavy bike okay so I think that covers it that's my bike that I rode across the US earlier this year if you have any questions about what's on there or comments or suggestions then please leave them in the comment section below see you on the next video